At Donghai University, in Building A, several different groups of students were sitting in a classroom somewhat similar to an amphitheater made of light wood. A guy named Lin Mu, with a short dark haircut and dressed in a white suit with a blue shirt, was apparently doing some kind of test work or solving some problem. This job seemed very difficult to him. A dark-haired girl in the company of her friends with different hair colors were heading towards the seats. Dark-haired Du Xiaoyu was wearing a black dress with a white collar and a red bow, diamond-shaped tights and red shoes, and a red headband was on her head. Xiaoyu's red-haired companion was dressed in a pink and white striped tunic and wore a pendant around her neck. Next to her was a purple-haired girl in a lilac dress with ruffles and the same lilac jacket with white stripes and blue jeans. Behind them were another girl with hair the color of an amethyst stone, in a white shirt and a long skirt, and a short-haired girl in a green jacket and beige shorts. The guys quickly began to discuss Du Xiaoyu. She thought she was very cute and beautiful. No wonder she was considered the queen of the campus, even though she was just a freshman. The guys did not understand at all why such a beautiful girl entered their university, and not one of some theater schools. One of the guys was surprised that, most likely, the girl does not want to be an actress. However, this is a second-year class. What is she doing here? Du Xiaoyu stared sternly at Lin Mu. The girl with red hair chuckled and asked her friend if Xiaoyu was engaged to him. According to the red-haired lady, the guy looked quite boring. To which the dark-haired Du Xiaoyu said that she would rather stay all alone than marry this boring Lin Mu. Xiaoyu's red-haired friend sauntered over to Lin Mu's desk, slapping her palms on the wooden covering. The girl tried to attract the guy's attention. She smiled slyly and said that she and her friends wanted to sit here and then asked Lin Mu to move. He sighed and said that there were plenty of empty desks in the back, so the girls could sit there. The red-haired woman looked sternly at the young man and said that they wanted to sit in his place. Then she looked at the notebook with the tasks that Lin Mu was solving. She began to tell him that since he could not solve such a simple task, how dare he occupy the first desk? The girl decided to give him a little advice, which was that Lin Mu should go to the back desk. He carefully covered the task with his fingers so that she would not see. But then Lin Mu cast a displeased glance at his daughter-in-law. Du Xiaoyu only expressed total indifference. A hand slapped the guy on the shoulder from behind. Lin Mu turned around. The guy from the second desk told him that a beautiful girl asked Lin Mu to move, so he should hurry up and move, and not be a thorn in the soft spot. Lin Mu sighed and gradually packed his things into a leather briefcase, leaving a comfortable place in the audience. When he walked past Du Xiaoyu, she gave him the most displeased look, shushed him and called him a coward. The red-haired girl raised her hand up and smiled slyly, saying that she did not believe at all that someone like Lin Mu could get into Donghai University by himself. She thought the guy probably had some connections. The dark-haired Xiaoyu smiled gently and said that as long as she could break off the engagement, she didn't care where this guy studied. Already in the evening, Lin Mu stood at the bus stop, thinking. The young man was thinking about Du Xiaoyu's words. He clenched his fist. What did he do to deserve such an appeal to himself? The engagement was organized by the parents. The guy was absolutely not to blame for this. The guy looked down and thought that he should go home and visit his grandfather. The young man hoped that the elderly man was much better than it was. Lin Mu got into a taxi. Lin Mu arrived home. The mansion of the Lin family was a large task with columns, made in light shades. It also had, apparently, three or four floors and a beautiful veranda. Lin Mu knocked on the wooden door and shouted, informing Grandpa that the guy had returned home. He almost touched the door and then he heard some sounds. Was his family arguing about something again? The guy thought about it and made a very sad expression on his face. Then he went inside and saw that all the relatives were already gathered. The interior of the house inside was also partially done in light shades, only the walls and a little furniture. The floor was made of dark wood, and the sofas were made of dark leather. There was a cow print carpet under the transparent coffee table. An adult woman with grayish shoulder-length hair smiled faintly and congratulated Mu on his return. Then she said that his grandfather had gone to the hospital for an examination and would soon return back to the mansion. That woman was Aunt Lin Rong. She was dressed in beige trousers and a black lace t-shirt, and also wore a purple cardigan over the t-shirt. Lin Rong had quite large red beads on her neck, which added sophistication to her neck. The guy threw his calm green-eyed bright glance in the direction of his Aunt Lin Rong and said that, in that case, he would go to his room and wait for Grandpa there. The guy walked past two men, Senior Uncle Lin Itai, a man with dark hair slicked back and old-fashioned glasses. He was dressed in a classic two-piece suit with a dark blue tie and a white shirt. In his hands was a saucer and a cup of tea. A man frowned at the bridge of his nose and said that Lin Mu has absolutely no manners, since he didn't even greet his family. Lin Yifei's second uncle had the same bright green eyes as Lin Mu. His hair was of medium length, also slicked back with hair gel. 
The second uncle wore a neat beard that turned into sideburns. He was partially dressed in a gray three-piece suit, but, apparently, the man took off his jacket, remaining only in a vest. He was also wearing a white shirt and a black tie. Lin Yai frowned and told Adai that they shouldn't take such care of Lin Mu. Then he lowered his voice and whispered that the guy didn't have much time left. At lunchtime, the grandfather of the Lin family also came back home. The elderly man was already walking badly, so he moved in a chair. He was wearing brown pants and a yellow shirt, as well as a white pork pie hat. Lin Mu knelt down in front of the elderly man and told him that starting from the day after tomorrow, Mu would not have classes for several days. Therefore, the guy promised to take good care of his grandfather. The green-eyed old man calmly looked at his grandson and agreed. Saddened, Lin Mu lowered his gaze and said that since his mother and father had passed away, grandfather had been in such a state. And after all, the Lin family doesn't even know if Grandpa Lin will get better. Then Aunt Ron came over and called the guy to dinner. The latter, getting up from his knees, smiled weakly and took Grandpa to the table. At the table, everyone settled down as usual. Grandpa Lin was sitting in the center. On his right hand sat Aunt Lin Rong and Uncle Lin Yif. On the grandfather's left hand were the elder uncle Lin Adai and Lin Mu himself. Lin Adai, holding bamboo sticks in his hand, attracted the attention of the rest of the family. He said that they are going to organize an auction soon, and uncle Adai has yet to receive certain powers to make decisions on the organization. He also reported that he was having some problems with it. Lin Yidai believed that the time had come when he should head the auction department. Lin Yifai smiled maliciously and said that since Idai had problems with the organization of the auction, he should not do it. Ayf offered his help to his older brother, as he was sure that he would do everything perfectly. Lin Mu loudly placed the chopsticks on the table. He got up and said that he had eaten enough and, therefore, would go to his room. Lin Yidai became indignant. What? Ayf wants an auction house. By the way, Lin Yidai has invested so much in it. Why should he give it to his younger brother? Did he do anything for the auction house? To which Lin Yifei asked his older brother if he really wanted an auction house. According to Lin Yif, Idai should be glad that he already has a few acres of land. I thought it was worth it to descend from heaven to earth. Lin Mu walked out onto the balcony, sighing heavily. His face expressed only sadness. The young man thought only that his parents had gone to heaven too soon. The guy slammed his fist on the balcony railing. Can't his parents see how the Lin family is rapidly disintegrating? The guy was tense. Then he heard a voice behind him. Turning around, Lin Mu saw Uncle Yifei smiling softly in front of him. He asked the guy if he really misses his parents again. Lin Mu sighed heavily and asked his Uncle Yifei that he needed him for some reason now. He said that it was not so. It seemed to him that the guy had eaten too little at dinner and so he decided to check on him. Lin Mu hesitantly thanked his uncle and assured him that he was fine. Lin Yifei chuckled and closed his eyes. He told Lin Mu that there were four of them, four brothers and sisters, the three of them and Lin Mu's father. However, only Lin Mu's father was able to inherit Lin's grandfather's skills. But unfortunately, Lin Mu's father was too fixated on work and spent all his time studying antiques and historical artifacts. However, the Lin family is huge and Grandpa Lin was a man of tradition. Uncle Ai said that grandfather insisted that it was Lin Mu's father who became his successor and headed the family business. However, the family continued to go at a loss, even when Lin Mu's father took over. Then Uncle Yifei sighed and patted Lin Mu's back, saying that they shouldn't talk about it. He just wanted to say that people shouldn't get what they can't handle, otherwise it will be a complete mess. Lin Mu shifted his gaze to his Uncle Yifei and asked what it meant. However, he abruptly pushed him, and the guy flew down from the balcony. Lin Mu watched in horror as he fell down. Landing on the ground face down, a pool of blood began to form under the guy. He fell dead, with almost no chance of survival. Lin Yifei sternly looked down at the bloody body lying on the lawn. Ife smiled slyly and said that it was a small gift from him to Lin Mu. Uncle Ife wanted to reunite the guy with his parents. A little later, a cry was heard throughout the house that Lin Mu had fallen from the balcony. In the doctor's office, a red-haired girl, apparently a doctor, was sitting at her desk and typing something on a computer. She was dressed in a black dress with a gold chain around her neck, at the end of which was a large blue jewel, and over it she threw a doctor's robe. Suddenly, a nurse in a turquoise suit runs into her office, shouting that they have a patient who fell from the balcony. Therefore, the head physician is looking for Dr. Zhu. Dr. Zhu cast a calm glance of her blue eyes at the worried nurse with beads of sweat on her forehead and said that she would come to the operating room now. In the emergency department, about five doctors worked to save Lin Mu's life. They were all wearing turquoise robes suitable for the operation. The surgeon kept his hands to the top because until the other assistants have prepared everything, he should not touch anything from the point of view of sterility. Lin Mu lay on the operating table and did not move. His blue shirt and white pants were stained with blood. His hands were bruised. 
His torso was covered in bruises and scratches, and his face was badly mutilated. Velcro straps were attached to his chest, showing his heartbeat, temperature, pulse, blood pressure and other indicators important for the operation. The red-haired Dr. Zhu put a white mask on her face and walked over to the operating table. She asked a group of doctors about the patient's condition. The head doctor was very serious. He cast a stern look at the girl and said that the patient had fallen from the fourth floor, having received a lot of internal bleeding. This doctor also noticed that Dr. Zhu is very talented in acupuncture. He asked the girl if she could save the patient. Dr. Zhu knitted her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose, expressing seriousness and even a certain severity. She said that there was one way by which it would be possible to save this guy, but it was very risky. The doctor took a calmer look and said he understood all the risks, but now they need to save this patient. The girl agreed and began to choose suitable needles. She inserted two needles on both sides into the temporal areas of Lin Mu's head, then two on both sides higher, closer to the crown and one needle in the center of the forehead. A few seconds later, the nurse who was monitoring the patient's indicator panel reported that Lin Mu's patient's condition had finally stabilized. The surgeon's eyes widened in shock. Did it really work out? Seeing a face full of shock, the red-haired Dr. Zhu explained that with the help of needles she stimulated the hit or run state. If this goes on for a long time, this guy's brain will die. Dr. Zhu said that she leaves the rest to the team of doctors from the operating room. The surgeon and the head physician concurrently ordered his assistants to start performing the operation as soon as possible. The nurse, who was standing at the panel with indicators, reported that the patient's pulse rose above normal. The surgeon frowned at the bridge of his nose and stared sternly at the operating table, cursing. Did it really not work? He ordered a defibrillator to be prepared. Another doctor picked up a defibrillator and charged it to 200 volts. This is the discharge he leaned against Lin Mu's body. He jerked by reflex, but it didn't help him at all. There is no pulse. The doctors tried a charge of 300 volts. It was also useless. The pulse was at zero. The surgeon lowered his head and informed his team that the patient had lost the last signs of life. The operation was a failure. The red-haired Dr. Zhu, taking off her mask, told them to be sure to inform the patient's guardians about this. The nurse nodded and then covered the already lifeless body of patient Lin Mu with a soft blue sheet. Upset doctors cleaned everything after the operation and left the operating room. They left Lin Mu there. All the devices were turned off, but reflected some kind of blue glow. A black incomprehensible spot was spinning over the body of this young man. What could it be? A dark deep spot, like a black hole, began to spin harder, creating a strong draft in the operating room. The base sheet flew off Lin Mu's cold body. Bluish glowing energy gradually flew into the muscular chest of the guy. Having penetrated inside, the blue glowing energy left only a sparkling purple smoke. However, after a few seconds, a blue glowing huge fist emerged from Lin Mu's motionless cold body, grabbing a sparkling purple smoke of energy. Due to the fact that the fist was holding onto the smoke, the guy gradually began to rise from the operating table. He was already practically hovering over him. The purple energy was very strong, since it was able to lift the young man off the ground. The black, rather dense energy began to merge with the pale hand of the young man. Having covered it almost completely, the energy began to slowly penetrate inside, leaving behind a medium-sized bronze ring on the index finger. So the guy floated unconscious for some time while the energy continued to merge with him. The next morning, the red-haired Dr. Zhu was standing near the door in the hospital corridor. Her eyes were closed due to a terrible lack of sleep, and her condition was drowsy. Today she was also wearing a black dress with a small neckline in the cleavage area, but already turquoise shoes with a small heel and a black choker around her neck instead of a pendant. On top of this outfit was, of course, a doctor's robe. Hearing the heart-rending screams, Dr. Zhu opened her eyes slightly. After looking around, she immediately ran towards the screams, entering the operating room. Dr. Zhu saw two terrified nurses in turquoise dresses just below the knees. Those through loud crying said that they did not understand at all what was happening, and the girls were insanely scared. The red-haired Dr. Zhu looked at Lin Mu's body with a serious look. Her blue eyes were burning into his, and the girl's eyebrows were pulled down to the bridge of her nose. The nurses stayed away, trying to calm each other down. Dr. Zhu looked at the body and did not move. Patient Lin Mu became taller and longer. It grew overnight, but how is that even possible? Reflecting on the strangeness of the phenomenon, Dr. Zhu touched Lin Mu's body with her hand. Then she opened her mouth in shock. A drop of sweat began to trickle down her face. Lin Mu's patient was warm. The girl stopped in surprise. How could a corpse not cool down overnight? What's going on anyway? Dr. Zhu placed her finger on patient Lin Mu's nose. He didn't even move from the girl's touch. But, suddenly, just a second later, he opened his bright green eyes and sternly looked at the world around him. The patient woke up. The red-haired Dr. Zhu was shocked by what had happened. 
The nurses opened their eyes in horror and started shouting something about zombies who came for the girls and would eat them. The calm Dr. Zhu turned her head towards these loud ladies. She told them to be quiet and then said that since they are nurses, they should not be surprised by such things. The red-haired Dr. Zhu suggested that the patient Lin Mu may have experienced clinical death. They were embarrassed and shyly lowered their heads, apologizing to the doctor. The risen from the dead Lin Mu calmly sat down on the operating table and, after examining the red-haired Dr. Zhu in a white doctor's coat and two cute dark-haired nurses in turquoise clothes, asked a group of medical workers who they were. Dr. Zhu looked at him in surprise. Lin Mu continued the interrogation. He looked around and asked where he was now. Then he paused for a few seconds, looked at his rumpled clothes, unbuttoned blue shirt and rumpled white pants with drops of blood. After examining his body, Lin Mu asked the girls who he was. Lin Mu was transferred to the intensive care unit at number 303, where three more people were supposed to live with him. The ward was quite spacious. The interior was done in light shades with a dark sea green tiled floor. The windows were large enough to allow light to penetrate well into the ward, which helped patients recover more quickly. Lin Mu was lying on a bed on a turquoise hospital pillow, covered with a turquoise blanket right up to his neck. The young man's dark-haired head was bandaged in the places of yesterday's acupuncture. Lin Mu's vital signs panels were calm, slowly beeping, which explained his stable condition. Dr. Zhu folded her hands in front of her and looked at the guy carefully, thinking. She was very serious. Her body was tense, like a string. The red-haired girl was thinking about whether it could be that the needles that Dr. Zhu inserted into his head yesterday damaged the point in his body responsible for memory. Lin Mu grunted, most likely in pain. Dr. Zhu wondered if the damage could have been so severe that the young man even forgot his own name. The red-haired girl put her right hand on her hip and tried to say in the most confident voice of all that the patient Lin Mu should not worry since the doctor believed that his memories would return soon. Then Zhu's doctor informed her that she had some other things that she needed to settle urgently, but she promised to definitely come back. She also explained to the patient that if the guy needs something, he can press the button by the bed and a nurse will come to him. While the guy was looking at a grey remote control with a red button, Dr. Zhu said goodbye to him and told him to rest. Lin Mu lay for a while with his eyes closed. Then he suddenly opened them, looking around in frustration. He realized that he didn't feel any spiritual kai at all in this place. The young man did not understand where he was at all. He tried to stand up, but he couldn't. Here's an attack. The body is nowhere weaker. Lin Mu looked at his hands, thinking that he had used the last bit of spiritual Kai to escape and create a new body for himself, otherwise he would have died. The guy chuckled and smiled in frustration. He would never have thought that he, the greatest cultivator in the world, would end up like this. Then the guy opened his bright green eyes filled with anger and revenge. He said that the Xuan Tan sect and the Yugi sect are brave guys, however. He smiled and said that all they had to do was wait for Lin Mu to return to the cultivation world, and he would kill every single one of them. There was a real commotion in the Lin mansion due to Lin Mu's sudden death and resurrection. Lin Yife shouted at people on the phone, outraged that these people absolutely do not know how to perform their duties. They had told him that his nephew Lin Mu was already dead. How could such a thing happen that this guy turned out to be the most alive of all the living? The man was screaming in horror that God knows what was going on in the hospital. On the phone, Lin Yife was informed in a calm voice that the patient Lin Mu, although alive, did not remember anything at all. Yife opened his mouth in shock. After a moment of silence, he told the doctors to take good care of his nephew and said that money would not be a problem in his treatment. After finishing the conversation, Lin Yife I sat in shock and did not move. His little sister Lin Rong, who is Lin Mu's aunt, started asking her brother about what was going on. What's going on there anyway? Didn't the doctors say the guy was dead? How could he possibly survive under such circumstances? Lin Yifei gritted his teeth and said he didn't know anything about how it could have happened like this. Then he said that the hospital had called, informing him that the patient Lin Mu, although alive, had lost his memory. Lin Rong opened her mouth slightly and asked about memory loss. Could it be that the guy has become a vegetable? I've chuckled. Does a woman really think that the condition of a vegetable and memory loss are the same thing? She asked her brother what they should do now. Change the action plan. What should they do now, since the nephew turned out to be a tenacious bird? Lin Yife suggested to his sister Lin Rong to go and check on the guy in the hospital, as she was closest to her nephew Lin Mu. He also said that they should not disclose their intentions until they know the situation first. Lin Yife suggested that the woman only check the young man to find out if he really lost his memory, or if he was just pretending. In the intensive care unit, the guy was already sitting on his hospital bed. His head was also bandaged, and the guy himself was dressed in a grey-bluish hospital robe. Someone knocked on the door and Lin Mu gave permission to enter. In front of him was a red-haired Dr. Zhu in her black dress with a small neckline and a blue stone and a pendant on a gold chain, and over it, as usual, in a doctor's robe. 
who brought with her another woman, Lin Mu's aunt, Lin Rong, who was also dressed in beige trousers and a black t-shirt with lace and over a purple cardigan. The adult woman had red beads around her neck, adding a twist to her outfit. The guy asked the doctor why she came, and Dr. Zhu, in turn, immediately asked the guy if he recognized the person who came to check on him. Lin Mu clenched his jaw and looked at the women with his bright green eyes, pointing his finger at the bandage on his dark-haired head. He said that in this state he does not remember anyone at all. Lin Rong sighed heavily and said that she was Lin Mu's aunt. Then she asked the guy if he really didn't recognize her at all. He apologized and said that he really did not remember this woman. Lin Rong sighed and frowned. Then she told the guy not to bother since he doesn't remember anything. She also told Lin Mu to rest more in order to get better as soon as possible and then she said she would come next time. Then the woman turned to Dr. Zhu and asked how it happened that her nephew Lin Mu began to look different. The girl smiled slightly and said that patient Lin Mu's face was damaged due to the fall, so they performed a small operation on his face. Lin Rong sighed heavily again and thanked Dr. Zhu for saving the guy and asked him to take good care of him. However, at this time, Lin Rong was only thinking that it looked like Lin Mu had really forgotten everything. Lin Mu was sitting in the intensive care unit and leafing through something. He was wearing his old suit, but already clean and without unpleasant red spots. And on his bedside table there was a pretty stack of different books. A guy named Mu was flipping through another book and was surprised. He read some rather strange information. It was written in the book that the human race has existed in this world for 5,000 years. The young man did not understand at all. Why is spiritual Kai so weak in this world? The guy barely felt it. He closed his eyes and thought that thanks to these books, he finally began to understand what was what. After some time, the patient Lin Mu found himself in the hospital corridor with the red-haired Dr. Zhu. She informed the young man that he was practically cured and, therefore, she thinks it's time to be discharged from the hospital. The guy agreed with Dr. Zhu's words and put his palm together with his fist, thanking the wonderful doctor for all the care he had taken for these few days. Dr. Zhu laughed and asked the guy about why he was acting like he came from some ancient times. Lin Mu was embarrassed and scratched his head, giggling. Then he said that the girl now knows his little secret. Lin Mu liked stories about martial arts. Dr. Zhu folded her hands in front of her and smiled, telling Lin Mu to go check out soon. Then she said that the guy needs to spend more time with family and friends, as this can help restore the guy's memory. After a while, Lin Mu finished his discharge from the hospital and went outside. A few minutes later, a bright yellow taxi pulled up. The guy got into the car and drove somewhere. Lin Mu thought that even though people don't have much spiritual Kai in this world, it was quite amazing to see how the human race could have developed so much without it. When they arrived at the university, Lin Mu felt his pockets and realized that he had neither cash, nor a card, nor the wallet itself. He went cold. The taxi driver reported that they had arrived at their destination and that the fare was $50. Beads of sweat began to trickle down the young man's face. He began to apologize to the taxi driver, stammering. The guy told the taxi driver that he had just been discharged from the hospital and therefore he had no money. Then the guy began to ask him for something, but the taxi driver interrupted him out of extreme surprise. The man was surprised that how could it be that a Donghai University student had no money? How could this happen? The man spoke loudly enough, more and more surprised by what was happening. Lin Mu, with a calm face, said that he really didn't have any money with him. The taxi driver grinned and told him, in that case, to call one of his friends to ask him to pay those miserable $50 for a taxi. Lin Mu blushed and was embarrassed. A drop of sweat began to trickle down his face again. He began to say something to the taxi driver, stammering a lot. However, the young man did not know what to do at all, since he does not know anyone at all. Suddenly, a pink-haired girl with a short haircut appeared in front of Lin Mu in the window. On her head was a bright cap with a sophisticated pattern. The girl examined the boy with her red eyes, and then greeted him. Lin Mu said in an excited voice that he had just been discharged from the hospital, and he had forgotten the money. Then the guy started asking the girl to pay for his taxi. This pink-haired lady, apart from an interesting cap with a complex pattern, was also wearing an interesting outfit. Blue sneakers, white and black striped stockings, denim shorts. The girl was also wearing a white sports top, and a sweater with a stretched neck was thrown over it. The girl chuckled and agreed. While she was taking out her lovely light green purse in the shape of a wonderful and cute frog, she said that it would not be a problem for her since she had some money. Then the girl tilted her bird-like head to the side, examining Lin Mu's face. After that, she still asked if he had done plastic surgery on his face. Lin Mu chuckled and smiled, saying that it wasn't. Then he asked the girl to pay first, and then he would tell her everything as soon as he got out of the yellow car. After a while, they were walking around the campus. Lin Mu calmly told the pieces of the story that he remembers. The girl, with her arms crossed behind her back, listened attentively to him. The guy lowered his gaze, telling about what happened after he fell. 
The pink-haired girl interrupted him, asking that the guy had lost his memory after falling from the balcony. Did the guy really, really not remember anything? The girl made the harshest of harsh looks and sternly asked the guy about what it means. It turns out that Lin Mu does not recognize her either. The young man cast a glance of his bright green eyes and apologized, saying that he could not remember at all. The pink-haired girl has already folded her hands in front of her. Then she examined the guy and asked him if the doctors had told him if he had the opportunity to return memories. Lin Mu looked into the distance with his bright green eyes, saying that he did not know for sure, maybe there was, or maybe not. The girl lowered her bright red eyes, saying that in general, memory loss may not be such a bad option. Perhaps it's a blessing. She said that sometimes she would like to forget everything. Du Ziyu, accompanied by a red-haired and purple-haired friend, walked towards Lin Mu. The dark-haired Du Ziyu lowered her gaze and tried not to look at Lin Mu. Her face expressed an incomprehensible mixture, either sadness or shame, is unknown. Then she still looked at him and stopped, asking the guy if he had done an operation for himself. He excitedly began to deny it. But the pink-haired girlfriend closed her eyes and said that he had done this operation. Then she asked how he was to the girls. In her opinion, he looked pretty cute. Du Ziyu turned cold and said in a stern voice that he might not even think about her marrying him because the guy had done some kind of surgery on himself. She thought that a nobody like Lin Mu would always remain a nobody. Lin Mu was standing with a pink-haired girl in front of Du Ziyu and her two friends. Everyone was calm, although their faces expressed severity. Lin Mu, who wasn't actually inside it, reflected that it looked like the previous owner of this body was engaged to this dark-haired girl. Lin Mu smiled sweetly and closed his eyes, confidently telling Du Ziyu that he did not mind breaking off the engagement with her at all. Ziyu was surprised and sternly called the guy by name. The pink-haired girl in the cap gasped in surprise. Mu opened his eyelids, revealing bright green eyes that clearly weren't lying. Then he opened his mouth and told Du Ziyu in a loud voice that he would never want to marry someone like her. Ziyu's friends were surprised. The girl just chuckled, saying that he was brave enough in his statements. Lin Mu flashed his teeth, smiling, and then repeated that if the dark-haired Du Ziyu wanted, then they could break off the engagement and then the girl would no longer bother Lin Mu. The pink-haired girl laughed and patted Mu's shoulder in a friendly way, admiring his antics. The young man said that he hoped that the guy would never see her again. A group of girls remained standing aside. Du Ziyu looked formidable. It seems Lin Mu has battered her authority. The pink-haired girl was laughing, rejoicing that Lin Mu had finally taken his little revenge. He chuckled and asked about the fact that, apparently, the guy used to be a rag. Had he always been bullied like this? The lady reported that he was not just bullied. It was a real shame. She began to tell about the incident on the stairs where Du Ziyu did something. However, Lin Mu interrupted the pink-haired woman, curling his lips. It turns out that Du Ziyu wanted to break off the engagement all the time, and Lin Mu just let her go. The guy began to take anger. The pink-haired girl crossed her arms over her chest and said that he didn't need to do anything else, because Ziyu didn't deserve more. Then she asked the guy that, does he really regret it now? Du Ziyu is still the most beautiful girl of the university, almost a queen. He believed the pink-haired one that he did not regret it. Lin Mu only regretted letting her go so easily. The pink-haired girl in the cap closed her eyes and told the guy to just stay away from Du Ziyu. She then offered to go inside so that she could show Lin Mu the way to their classroom. Already, approaching the audience, Mu and that sweet lady walked calmly. Then the girl felt movement right in front of her eyes. The dart was a millimeter away from the girl's eyes. However, she caught it with her fingers with lightning speed, avoiding terrible injuries. Then the girl changed her face and began shouting at a dark-haired guy in a blue shirt and white trousers. This guy's name was Chen Hao. She was shouting that she had already told this guy many times not to play darts in the classroom. What would happen if a guy hit his classmate with a dart? The dark-haired guy scratched his forehead excitedly. Well, he angered Tang Bei Bei, who, as it turned out, was the same pink-haired girl. The guy shyly lowered his eyes and apologized to the headman of Bei Bei, promising that this would never happen again. The girl closed her eyes and said that the skills of this guy named Chen Hao are not so good to show off in public. Tan Bei Bei flashed her hand and the dart was right in the center of the round dartboard. Lin Mu was impressed. Such precision. This was the level of the foundation dimension. Then Tang Bei Bei stood by the teacher's desk and blackboard. She announced to the guys that she wanted to reintroduce him to all her classmates, and then she called him by name. The girl also reminded everyone that Lin Mu had received some injuries and had to be in the hospital. Bei Bei smiled slightly and added that although Lin Mu had recovered, he had lost his memory. In connection with these circumstances, the girl wanted to hope that each classmate would be able to help at least in some way. Tang Bei Bei said that they as a group would try to do everything possible to bring back Lin Mu's memories. The classmates were inspired by such a speech by their headman, and they clapped their hands loudly. Lin Mu stealthily cast his bright green gaze at the pink-haired girl. 
In his opinion, this Tang Bei Bei is not so bad, so she is also a popular class leader. There was a knock on the door. A middle-aged woman with a red bun on her head and in a strict gray striped suit entered the office. The suit consisted of a jacket and skirt, as well as a lace shirt with ruffles. This woman also wore ordinary eyeglasses. Two unruly strands escaped from her bun, making the woman a little younger and less strict. She smiled gently, holding some papers in her hands, and then asked if she had missed something interesting. The Donghai University classroom was a large room with a flat floor, made in light colors, almost white. Even the board was for colored markers. The tables and chairs of the students were made of light metal. Only the teacher's desk was made of wood of a slightly orange shade. Lin Mu carefully examined the cute woman with glasses who had just come into the classroom. He turned towards Bei Bei and asked her about the fact that the woman was also their classmate. The girl giggled loudly and said that she was their instructor named Song Liang Ru. He gasped in shock. Song Liang Ru smiled and said that since the guy had returned to them at Donghai University, he would need to go somewhere with an instructor. Lin Mu looked at the headman in surprise. She shouted to wake up the guy that he shouldn't stand and go with Miss Song as soon as possible. He excitedly gasped and followed the instructor. Already in the dream teacher's office, the woman was sitting on her soft black computer chair and smiling. Instructor Song Liang Ru's office was also bright. The walls were white, and the floor was a light gray shade. Only her desk was made of wood with an orange hue and a black computer chair stood out against this light background. She said she heard about the incident and asked the guy if everything was okay. He smiled gently and thanked her for her concern, believing Miss Song that the young man thinks he is already quite healthy, just like a cucumber. Moreover, fresh, not pickled. She smiled and looked with her blue eyes through the lenses of her glasses. Then she said that she was very pleased to hear about the guy's recovery. If anything, if Lin Mu needed help, he could contact Mrs. Song Liang Ru. He nodded approvingly. There was a knock on the door. When it opened, Tang Bei Bei peeked out from behind the door and asked Miss Song if they had finished, as the girl really wanted to have lunch with Lin Mu, and then, at the same time, show him the university afterwards. The woman said that they had finished and the guys could go. She also thanked Bei Bei for doing all this for Lin Mu. The pink-haired Bei Bei smiled shyly and giggled, saying that she should do it anyway, because they are, after all, classmates. When the guys left the door, Song Liang Ru wondered if it was true Lin Mu, since not only his appearance, but also his personality had changed significantly. The street around the campus was neatly cleaned. The pedestrian path was made of light stone. The curbs were painted white. The trees were neatly trimmed and had a great view. As for the lawn, it was also perfectly trimmed. It was without a flaw, as if the lawn rolls had just been laid out straight from the store. As the guys were walking around the campus, Lin Mu praised Bei Bei for throwing a dart so well. He suggested that the girl is very much engaged in playing darts. She smiled playfully and said that, given her training at home, this trick is just nothing. And then she asked if the young man also wanted to practice playing darts. Lin Mu smiled gently and said it would be nice to practice. Tang Bei Bei stopped the guy and put her hands on his shoulders to look. She noticed that the guy's body became much stronger than it was before. It even seemed to her that Lin Mu had been training hard for a long time earlier. She was surprised. Bei Bei didn't know that falling from a balcony could bring such benefits. A drop of sweat dripped down Lin Mu's face. The excited guy reported that he was practically dead. The body is the only plus he got. The guy summed up that the fall from the balcony is not worth it. Tang Bei Bei thought about it. She scratched her neat chin and said that it wouldn't be worth it, but the guy in horror bulged his green eyes and interrupted the girl. He told her not to take it like that. The pink-haired girl suddenly became serious and said that she was just wondering what Lin Mu was going to do now. The young man closed his eyes and thought about what he should do now. He said he had no plans. The guy also said that he can't even remember anything from the past at all. Tang Bei Bei smiled slyly and asked him if Lin Mu ever wanted to live his life differently. The young man again bulged his bright green eyes and asked the pink-haired girl what she meant. Bei Bei reported that the previous Lin Mu was an introverted weakling who could not stand up for himself, and people like Du Zai while you constantly bullied the guy. Tang Bei Bei pointed her finger at her heart and said that the current Lin Mu not only looks different, but also seems to have a different personality. The pink-haired girl raised her hands up and said that it seemed to her that this accident was given to this guy by God as a chance to change himself, start a new life. After all, then why else would Lin Mu be given such a super strong body? The girl asked the guy that why wouldn't he take advantage of such a great opportunity. Inspired, Lin Mu looked at the girl with his bright burning green eyes and asked what she thought about what he needed to do. Bei Bei smiled slyly and asked Lin Mu if he had ever heard of dragon defenders. Lin Mu's bright green eyes bulged in surprise. Dragon hunters. What? Tang Bei Bei became even more serious. She said that before talking about the dragon defenders, she should also talk about the world of martial arts. The girl looked sternly at the guy and asked if he believed that there are people who could kill only with simple leaves. The guy looked at the girl in surprise and thought. 
Can it be with the help of spiritual Kai filling? He became serious and said admiringly that he believed in the existence of such people. However, he still asked if such people exist nowadays. Tang Bei Bei became even more strict. Did Lin Mu really think that such people could be found so easily? She lowered her bright red eyes and revealed that the legends say that some masters have reached the Zion Tian dimension. The pink-haired girl reported that her grandfather once got quite close to this dimension. But, unfortunately, he was defeated by inner demons and her grandfather lost all his cultivation. However, to Bei Bei's joy, her beloved grandfather still survived. Tang Bei Bei became sad while telling this difficult story. Lin Mu gently put his hands on his classmate's shoulders and tried to encourage her. He told Bei Bei not to be sad, because he is still alive, which is much more important than any cultivation. Tang Bei Bei cheered up. She said that there are a lot of talented people in their Tang sect. Bei Bei hoped that someone would reach this Zion Tian dimension. With her grandfather's guidance, she believed that these talented people would one day glorify the Tang sect. Lin Mu's green eyes bulged in surprise. He then asked Bei Bei about the Tang sect. Is she in Sichuan? The pink-haired girl laughed and poked Lin Mu's forehead with her index finger, surprising him even more. She began to laugh even more. Was Lin Mu thinking of that very Tang sect from that very martial arts novel? She smiled enthusiastically and said that the sect exists beyond the novels. Talented people from the Tang sect, like Tang Bei Bei herself, are masters of poisons and hidden weapons. The Sichuan Tang sect. Lin Mu had a record of how he split up, and someone was watching him. Tang Bei Bei said that at the peak they had a lot of Zion Tian experts. Lin Mu adjusted his dark-haired bangs forward so that it even covered his right eye, and then asked about how strong these Zion Tian experts were. Bei Bei carefully looked at the guy with her red eyes and said that Grandpa said that all their techniques that the people of the Tang sect still use were created by these Zion Tian experts. Lin Mu was shocked. He bulged his bright green eyes the color of freshly mown lawn again. He asked the girl what was going on, so the dragon defenders consist of such experts. At this time, the young man was thinking that it seems that these Zion experts are equal in strength to the level of the foundation dimension. Tang Bei Bei walked forward. She closed her eyes and said that of course not. The dragon protectors were created by the Huazia government for special occasions. Bei Bei explained that it follows that some sects send their disciples to the team to break through faster. She also said that the girl is now coaching such a team. Lin Mu asked Tang Bei Bei with interest, even slightly embarrassed, if he could join the team if he was not from the Tang sect. Bei Bei smiled radiantly and said that he would definitely be able to join. She also said that Lin Mu's potential, combined with good training, would allow the young man to be no weaker than her team's recruits. She then asked uncertainly if Lin Mu would join the Dragon Protectors. Lin Mu looked into the distance, thinking. The girl calmly waited for his answer. The guy looked sternly at the girl and agreed, saying that he really wants to live a completely different life. Already at night, the guys came to a bright glowing building located in the city. This multi-story glowing building was the Tang Long Corporation. Lin Mu walked quite surprised. He asked Tang Bei Bei about whether the Dragon Defender's base was in the middle of the city. She closed her eyes and calmly replied that why not, since, as an important agency for the government, they can't be located somewhere in the mountains. Still, what if there is some kind of urgency? It'll be too late by the time the Dragon Defenders arrive. Lin Mu scratched his head with his hand in embarrassment. A drop of sweat trickled down his face again. At this time, the classmates had already entered the Ten Long Corporation building and were waiting for the elevator to get to the Dragon Defender's base. The elevator opened and they went inside. The elevator was an ordinary small room made of ordinary matte gray metal. There were as many as 21 button floors in the elevator. This is a skyscraper. When they got into the elevator, Lin Mu asked Tang Bei Bei about the fact that the whole building is the base of the Dragon Defenders. Tang Bei Bei took out some kind of gold plastic card and ran it along the wall of the elevator, where there was a panel with floor buttons. A blue screen with a blue interface opened in front of them. The girl poked something on it and informed Lin Mu that the Tang Long Corporation was just a regular disguise of their Dragon Defender team base. Then she calmly stood up and told the guy to wait. The young man realized in shock that they were not going up at all. He immediately stopped the girl in mid-sentence and asked about why they were going down. What's happening? The guy, terrified, moved to the wall and pressed himself against the metal coating. The elevator made a distinctive sound, informing them that they had arrived at the right floor. The elevator doors gradually opened. Bei Bei stepped forward. The guy saw an office made in light, almost white shades. The office was not simple. It was even somewhat similar to a scientific laboratory. The people from the Dragon Defenders team were dressed in white suits and white robes, similar to the robes of scientists or doctors. Everyone was busy with the tasks of their work, like ants in an antel or bees in a hive. Here is the base of the Dragon Defenders. After arriving at the Dragon Defenders base, Lin Mu and Tang Bei Bei passed the science office and went to the back office. Inside, the interior was quite interesting. 
beige delicate walls. The doors and floor were made of dark wood. The furniture was made in dark colors, almost black, which created a wonderful contrast in the room. When the guys went inside, a man was sitting opposite them on a black rug. His eyes shone with a bright golden light. It seems that this white-haired man in a traditional Chinese suit was just waking up. He looked seriously at Bei Bei and asked the girl what she was doing at the base in the middle of the night. At this time, Lin Mu was looking at what was happening around him, and especially the grey-haired man with a shoulder-length hairstyle. The guy was thinking that he had just seen the glow of spiritual Kai from this old man. It looks like this old man has broken through the foundation dimensions right into the energy gathering dimension. However, the young man understood that this old man was still far from the Zion Tian dimension. Tang Bei Bei beamed and told her uncle Yang that she had brought a martial arts genius. She reported that there are one in a million people like Lin Mu. He began to get up from his carpet, grinning. He said that Bei Bei doesn't make sense to joke when she introduces her boyfriend. In addition, the man believed that it was already late for studying martial arts. Bei Bei ran up to Uncle Yang, smiling. She had convinced him that Lin Mu was not her boyfriend. Then the pink-haired girl suggested that the old man check out this guy named Mu himself. He smiled and agreed to do it, saying that he would believe the words of his niece. Tang Bei Bei took her Uncle Yang by the arm and led him to Lin Mu. When he came up and put his hand on Lin Mu's shoulder, examining him with the most serious and stern look, Bei Bei peeked out from behind Uncle Yang and giggled. Uncle Yang bulged his bright brown eyes with a golden hue and looked at Lin Mu in surprise. What? How is this even possible? Uncle Yang never ceased to be surprised at how strong the guy's body is, even though he does not know martial arts at all. Tang Bei Bei smiled sweetly, closing her eyes. She told her uncle that's exactly what she was talking about. She then introduced Lin Mu to her uncle. She also said that Mr. Lin Mu used to be an ordinary guy, but after falling from the balcony, his body became several times stronger. Uncle Yan frowned at the bridge of his nose, tensing up. He was surprised. How could this even happen? Lin Mu replied in a calm voice that he didn't know that. The young man also said that they tried everything at the hospital, but they never found out the reason for what happened. Gray-haired Uncle Yang thought about it and said that he understood, since Bei Bei had brought the guy, then he knew about the Dragon Defenders. He asked Lin Mu if the guy had thought about joining the ranks of the Dragon Defenders team, to which the guy replied with a firm agreement. Uncle Yang wrinkled his eyebrows even more, expressing severity. He said that before becoming part of the team, Lin Mu would need to take a test. And when the guy joins the Dragon Defenders team, it won't be so easy to get away from them. The gray-haired man asked the guy if he understood this. The young man tilted his head to the side like a bird and said that Tang Bei Bei had already explained everything to him before coming to the Dragon Defenders base. The guy also said that he had already made a decision. He really wanted to join the Dragon Defenders team. Uncle Yang grinned and sternly looked at the guy. He informed the guy that he was ready to start the test in order to pass it as soon as possible. The man believed that with such a talent as Lin Mu already has, he could easily pass it. The white-haired man also said that it would be a pity if Lin Mu didn't study martial arts with such a body. Uncle Yang handed Lin Mu a thick blue notebook with some hieroglyphs. He said that this notebook contains techniques for holding your breath. He believed that there was no better technique for laying the foundations. The man told the guy to definitely burn this book after Lin Mu reads it, since information leakage in their Dragon Defenders team is unacceptable. He kept looking at the guy, grinning even more. Then the gray-haired old man told the guy to just follow the instructions given in this thick notebook. And then, after Lin Mu mastered the technique, he would need to find Uncle Yang. Lin Mu listened attentively to the man. Taking the thick blue book from his hands, he thanked the old man. Tang Bei Bei said that, in that case, she would definitely take Lin Mu to the test. Uncle Yang approved and said that the guys could go. After the guys left Uncle Yan's room, he laughed out loud. He was thinking that Bei Bei had really brought him some kind of miracle. The man was sure that the Donghai branch would soon receive a new expert. In the dead of night, Lin Mu returned to the dorm. Arriving in his room, the young man immediately began to study new techniques for holding his breath. As he read the thick blue book, he thought that he had no idea at all why Liu Shuyang's spiritual Kai was so strange. The guy decided to assume that maybe it was because of the weak Kai of this world. The young man closed the book. Then he looked at his bright glowing ring, from which black smoke emanated. It seemed to be spiritual Kai manifesting. Lin Mu, looking at the ring on his hand, thought. He was wondering when he would be able to get to the items from the vault contained in this ring. The guy was also interested in when he would be able to use this ring for other purposes. This ring was the only item he had left from the world from which the soul of this greatest immortal cultivator had come, encased in the body of the real Lin Mu. He watched as the black smoke began to disappear along with the bright glow of the ring. The guy got up from the table. He decided that as soon as the sun rose, the guy would go to the library and look for information about this strange world, where spiritual Kai was weak to a nightmare. As soon as it was morning, Lin Mu went to the library. The library inside presented a luxurious interior. 
light brown columns, beige walls, and patterned carpets of various brown shades on the floor. The furniture looked antique, but at the same time, no less luxurious. Beautiful antique sofas and armchairs in yellow-brown shades and tables made of dark wood. People were whispering quietly so as not to disturb anyone. Or they were busy reading books or studying something new. Lin Mu was just the one who was learning something new for himself. He had collected a small stack of books and was sitting on an easy chair with a yellow pattern on it. On the dark wood table was a stack of books that the guy would read a little later. While the guy was reading, he heard a scream that broke the idol of silence in the library. They were shouting some name Wang Dong. He glanced at the source of the sound and saw Du Xiaoyu talking to some tall guy. A blonde man in a white suit was actively gesticulating with his hands, saying something to the girl. She spoke loudly enough to this blonde that she was warning the guy not to molest her anymore. She also told him not to think he was worth anything just because this guy's family had money. He smiled radiantly and said that he and Du Xiaoyu are equally rich. So they, in the opinion of this blonde, are perfect for each other. He believed that since they were the heirs of their families, then everything fits perfectly. The girl looked at him with undisguised contempt and anger. Her eyebrows drew together to the bridge of her nose to the maximum. She was on the verge of anger. Du Xiaoyu asked him who he thought he was. Then she asked Wang Dong when the Wang family would be transferred to him. After giving him a look full of contempt, Xiaoyu turned on her heel and began to walk away in the opposite direction. Wang Dong caught up with her and asked her if Du Xiaoyu was rejecting him because of his engagement to that coward Mu from the Lin family. The girl stopped, but remained silent. He continued to annoy the girl, saying that he had heard that Lin Mu was a non-entity. Wang Dong genuinely didn't understand how a man like Lin Mu could be with a girl like Du Xiaoyu. The dark-haired girl noticed Lin Mu and gave him a look, just as angry, though not because of him. Lin Mu pretended to be someone who hadn't heard anything and was just reading a book. Wang Dong noticed Lin Mu who Du Xiaoyu was looking at and grinned, calling him. Then, still grinning, he asked the guy how he was doing, calling him Master Lin. He openly ignored him. Van Don was quite annoyed by this. Well, where are his manners? He knitted his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and walked over to Lin Mu. Looking at the guy from above, he asked Mu if he hadn't heard what Don had asked him. Then the blonde man asked the young man if he might have hearing problems. Lin Mu looked up with a disdainful look from his bright green eyes and asked if he knew this blonde man, and then asked what he wanted from him. The blonde man named Wang Dong grinned again. He reported that he had heard that Lin Mu and Du Xiaoyu were engaged. Then he said that he just wanted to warn Lin Mu that he should hurry up and break off the engagement with this girl. Lin Mu lowered his calm gaze and calmly replied. Not surprised by the engagement question, he informed the blonde that they had already cancelled it. Then the young man said that he was no longer concerned about the affairs of the dark-haired girl, so the blonde should no longer climb to the guy. The blonde turned around in surprise and asked the girl again. She made the most innocent eyes in the world and said in a quiet voice that this was not the case. And she and Lin Mu did not cancel the engagement at all. Wang Dong suddenly tore the book out of Lin Mu's hands and then threw it on the floor. The book fell onto the patterned brown carpet with a crash. Then the guy leaned over to Mu, smiling angrily. He was frankly annoyed that the guy decided to deceive him. Don threatened Mu that the guy would pay for his lies. Lin Mu grunted and abruptly grabbed Wang Dong by the neck of his shirt, not forgetting the red tie. He chuckled and asked what a jerk like Lin Mu would do to him. Lin Mu abruptly grabs him from behind and throws him onto the patterned carpet. The blonde young man falls to the floor with a crash, clearing his throat. He began to ask Mu about what he was doing at all. The dark-haired guy stepped on the blonde man's chest and began to press, not letting him get up. He cried out in pain. Lin Mu turned around and asked Du Xiaoyu if she still needed an engagement. The girl made a serious face and said that, of course, no. However, those two old men, that is, the parents, want her. She also said that this whole engagement process is not so simple, so you need to do everything properly. Lin Mu slapped his forehead with his palm and sighed heavily. He told the girl that he did not think that all this would annoy him so much. Then the guy turned to a blonde man named Wang Dong, whose face was twisted in pain. The young man informed him that Du Xiaoyu was technically still Lin Mu's fiancé, so the young man told Wang Dong to stay away from him, a guy named Lin Mu. He grunted, asking Lin Mu if he knew who a man like Wang Dong was. Lin Mu pressed his black patent leather boot harder on Don's hand, telling him that Mu didn't care who Wang Dong was. Then he told him to answer what he had told him before. He began to scream in pain, agreeing that he would leave. Lin Mu removed his foot from his arm and ordered him to disappear. A blonde man named Wang Dong, rubbing his sore arm, hurried to disappear. The library was devastated. Chairs were lying on the floor. The girl looked at what was happening in shock. Lin Mu continued to watch as the blonde man in the white shabby suit walked off into the sunset. Wang Dong cast a look full of humiliation and anger. He was thinking that this little nobody named Lin Mu would pay for the humiliation he had done. Wang Dong left the luxurious library room, 
leaving Lin Mu and Du Xiaoyu to deal with the mess left after the fight. On the screams and quarrels, onlookers came running and began to chatter in the beautiful library, as if they were at a sports stadium at some match of super famous teams. A dark-haired middle-aged man in a black suit with a pass around his neck ran forward. He started screaming, trying to find out what had happened here. He also asked the crowd to stop shouting and keep quiet, because they are in such a wonderful place as the library. Lin Mu turned around and looked guiltily at the librarian. An exciting drop of sweat was running down his face. The young man apologized and said that here the student accidentally collided with the table. The guy picked up the fallen chair and began to put everything in its place, assuring the librarian that he would put everything in its place. The dark-haired Du Xiaoyu came up from behind and told Lin Mu that he had changed a lot since he wasn't like this at all before. The guy froze and looked at the girl out of the corner of his eye, but then turned away again and continued to put things in order, simultaneously answering the girl that perhaps this was for the best, since now he would obviously have fewer problems. The girl was silent for a while, but then she raised her voice again, warning Mu that Wang Dong is one of those nasty types of people who are always taking revenge on everyone. Xiao Yu asked Lin Mu to be careful. Mu chuckled and even smiled slightly, thanking the girl for the warning. While cleaning, the guy noticed a book lying on a patterned brown carpet. It was revealed. While the guy was walking to pick it up, he peered at the text that read, Someone has to finish what they started in case the enemies come back. The young man picked up the book and carefully read this sentence. He thought about it, rubbing his sharp chin with his hand. Finish what you started. What could it mean? Lin Mu stated the fact that he had learned the very technique of holding his breath, so he needed to find Uncle Yang as soon as possible and get something new. The Wang family's house was huge. This mansion was in no way inferior to the one that the Lin family has. A four-story building with an attic, made in cold and even dark colors. To go to this luxurious mansion, it was necessary to cross an equally luxurious bridge located above the water. In the middle of the house there were huge panoramic windows to the floor. On the sides on the first floor there are ordinary windows, on the second already with small balconies. On the third floor there were gorgeous large balconies and glass doors leading to them. A heart-rending scream came from this luxurious house. Someone called a group of people useless bad people. One, apparently, of the employees in classic black suits even flew an open book and right in the head. Although he managed to block the blow with his hands, he was clearly in pain. Other employees listened to nasty things in their address, pouring streams of sweat. The man shouted that he had been giving his employees a whole week, and they had brought too little necessary information. The man began to spray even more, saying that he spends huge amounts of money on his employees, and they let him down and do nothing. An adult man with blonde hair spread his arms to the sides, shouting that the staff had told him that Lin Mu was a weakling and a coward. The man, apparently Wang Dong's father, was completely perplexed how Lin Mu had the sense to have the courage to break Wang Dong's arm. Where did the guy even get such destructive courage? The employees shyly bowed their heads down and, drenched in streams of sweat due to fear and horror at the moment, reported that they reported only what they saw. Lin Mu, in their opinion, used to be different. He was a weakling and a coward. The senior man from the Wang family stopped and continued to question the staff in a calm tone. Although he had stopped shouting, his face was still red with anger and with terribly swollen veins from overexertion. Wang Dong's father asked the employee to explain in more detail about Lin Mu's changes. The agitated man with dark hair cautiously began to tell his boss that they had bribed someone from the servants of the Lin family mansion. From what that worker said, it was clear that Lin Mu was a weakling and a terrible coward. But, after the incident of falling from the balcony of the fourth floor, the young man lost his memory and became so brave. In addition, he began to appear at home not so often. Wang Dong's father looked sternly at his workers in suits and told them to go and bring Mr. Lin Mu to him. The man really wanted this brave guy to be here in the Wang family mansion, no matter what. The employees straightened up and stood up like soldiers, exactly on the string, informing that they would definitely fulfill their new assignment. The face of the senior blonde of the Wang family was twisted with malice and anger. The man's grimace was truly terrifying. The man was talking under his breath, addressing Lin Mu. Did the guy really think that everyone would be afraid of him, since he was from the Lin family? The man said that the guy had offended him, Wang Jun Lai. The man promised the guy that he would make Lin Mu want to die. The next day, or maybe even a couple of days later, Lin Mu left the university building as usual. However, just today, a beige minibus parked right in front of the entrance of Donghai University. The young man carefully examined the car with his bright green eyes. Is something really wrong? Three men, somewhat similar to bikers, got out of the minibus. Tough, muscular men with tattoos and short hair. In addition, one of them also put on aviator's glasses. Two of them were wearing long sleeve sweatshirts and denim trousers. The man in dark glasses was wearing a short t-shirt and a torn denim vest. He just asked the stopped green-eyed guy if he was Lin Mu. The guy answered approvingly and asked the underbikers on what issue they came to the guy. The man in the center smiled, 
grinning maliciously and said that their boss had invited Mr. Lin Mu for a cup of tea. The guy bulged his bright green eyes and said he didn't know their boss at all. The chief of this harsh team smiled nastily and told the guy to stop wasting their time. He suggested that Lin Mu obediently go with them if he didn't want to be beaten. The guy sighed and agreed to go with them. While they were driving in a beige minibus, the guy, sitting on a black leather car seat, was thinking that it seems that the Wang family really likes to take revenge on other people. Lin Mu chuckled and smiled, thinking that it was even for the best, since Mu also really likes it. Wang Junlai slowly smoked his cigar, thinking about life. One of the workers informed his boss that Lin Mu had arrived at his place. He exhaled thick smoke, smiling. Then the man ordered Lin Mu to be brought to his office. The workers came out and a few minutes later there was a knock on the door. Jun Lai ordered me to enter the office. Lin Mu in a white university suit entered the office of Wang Jun Lai's boss, and behind the guy, Mr. Wang's employees in black classic suits lined up in a semicircle. The interior of Chief Wang's office was made in light shades. The light gray tiles on the floor made the room a little bigger than it is. The walls were also light, almost white, like the colors of French champagne. Expensive leather sofas were made of beige leather, and a dark oak coffee table complemented them. Wang Junlai was sitting on his beige sofa, looking at Lin Mu. Then he asked the guy, looking at him maliciously, asking if he understood what he was getting into. To which Lin Mu coldly replied that he had no idea at all. The man twisted his face in anger again, again bringing his thick, disheveled eyebrows to the bridge of his nose, gritting his teeth. The man grated that he was giving the guy a hint. This stern man's clue was that Wang Dong was his son. Lin Mu smiled. He giggled and began to joke about them. So that's what all the fuss is about. The kid was beaten, and now his old man wanted to help the kid. Wang Junlai laughed and clapped his hands, holding the cigar between his fingers. In his opinion, Lin Mu was quite a brave guy, since such a conversation had already started. Before Lin Mu, no one had dared to talk to Mr. Wang like that. He smiled maliciously and said that since Mu was from the Lin family, Wang Junlai decided to take it easy with him. He told the guy that he could leave here when he tore his tendons. Lin Mu turned cold and sternly looked at the man, asking what would happen if he didn't do it. The employee gently put his hand on Lin Mu's shoulder, asking him not to complicate the situation. Mu suddenly punches the employee in the face with his fist, saying that the man should not interfere with their important conversation. Lin Mu then grabbed the employee by the arm and threw him over himself. It fell right on the dark brown coffee table, smashing it to smithereens. Wang Junlai just chuckled, praising the guy for his good techniques. However, he then challenged Lin Mu. Will the guy be able to beat all the other employees? Men in black suits crowded around the guy, forming a circle. They were ready to attack. Lin Mu smiled with undisguised excitement. Jun Lai watched the scene almost with an imaginary popcorn. He shouted that the battle was quite good. The smile on the guy's face was even at such a tense moment. The newborn bull was not afraid of tigers. Then, suddenly, Wang Jun Lai changed his face, tensing up again to the swelling of the vessels on his face. He ordered his employees, like trained predators, to tear the guy to pieces. Lin Mu stood perfectly still. He told Mr. Wang's employees to attack him altogether and as soon as possible, since the guy had absolutely no time for them because he still needed to talk to their boss. The employees put out their small knives, and someone even took out a wooden bat. Lin Mu took a fighting stance, preparing to block the attacks. Motley employees began to attack the guy, however, he blocked their blows in every possible way and even counterattacked. He hit one of them, the red-haired one, in the chest. Another, a brunette, punched in the face. Another employee was hit with a foot in patent leather shoes in the right rib, almost next to the solar plexus. Ten seconds later, Lin Mu was adjusting his clothes, namely the sleeves of his blue shirt and white jacket. The employees were lying around him on the gray tile floor. Knives and bats were lying next to them. All the guys were unconscious, or they tried not to show signs of life, so as not to get a portion of blows from Mr. Lin Mu once again. Wang Junlai opened his mouth in shock. His face was contorted again, all wrinkles and cold sweat. He didn't understand at all how such a thing was even possible. Lin Mu slightly knitted his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and smiled again. Chuckling, he asked Jun Lai about how a man fights. Then the young man invited him to continue it. Lin Mu said that Wang Jun Lai and his son Wang Dong took Lin Mu quite a lot of time. The young guy was very interested in how the men from the Wang family would compensate Lin Mu for the wasted time. Worried in earnest, Wang Junlai spread his arms to the sides and said that it was all their fault. He then offered Lin Mu $20 million in compensation. The dark-haired guy chuckled and smiled maliciously. Was this old man offering him a dirty $20 million? Yes, the ill-gotten money was clearly not interested in Mu. The latter, trying to calm down from fear, tried to convince the guy that this is the cleanest, 100% pure $20 million. Lin Mu agreed and began to rummage with his hand in the inner pocket of his jacket. Taking a bank card out of his jacket, he ordered the money to be transferred to it. He agreed to do it, but he needed a computer. After a while, 
Wang Junlai entered all the necessary data on the computer and transferred $20 million to Lin Mu's bank card. Turning the monitor screen towards the guy, Jun Lai smiled and said that everything was ready and the guy could check that the money had already been transferred to his account. Lowering his hand down while Lin Mu was distracted, the man did something secretly. Lin Mu thanked Boss Wang and said that if that was all, then he would go home. The man looked seriously and told the young man that there was no need to hurry. He invited the guy to chat a little more. At this time, under the table, holding a gun in his right hand, Wang Jun Lai took out a pistol from under the table and pointed it at Lin Mu. He stopped and did not move, looking at the man. Jun Lai smiled maliciously and began to tease the guy. He began to question the young man about why he had stopped. Wasn't it Lin Mu who was acting so cool just now? Lin Mu grinned. Then he suddenly kicked the table, startling the man. He fell off the chair and dropped the gun. Mu asked the man that, was it really worth it? Wang Jun Lai had just dug his own grave. He tried to force a smile, asking Mr. Lin. Then he insisted that it was just a simple misunderstanding. He began to say that in fact, the man really only wanted to talk to the young man, to which the stern guy replied that he thought they had nothing to talk about. Lin Mu's face expressed anger. He said that if he wanted to, he could kill Jun Lai right now, like stepping on a berry. The man, having lost all hope, looked at the young man with a pleading look. He was remorseful. Jun Lai said that he was sorry and he was wrong. The man said that the Lin family and the Wang family are very close, so they shouldn't complicate things so much. He said it didn't matter what order the young master gave him now. Wang Junlai promised to fulfill it using all his capabilities. Lin Mu gasped. If that's what Mr. Wang wants, then that's fine. The guy grabbed the man by the neck and stuffed some kind of pill into his mouth. He swallowed against his will, and then, salivating, grunted, asking about what Lin Mu had just given him. Lin Mu pointed his finger at him and said he didn't believe him. He also said that Wang Jun gave Lai Han Xiaobing beauty in. Then the guy said that if he behaved well, the young man would give him an antidote every three months, otherwise Jun Lai would die a terribly painful death. Finally, Lin Mu advised him to think about it well. He turned on his heel and left Mr. Wang's office. A bell rang from Lin Mu's pants pocket. The guy took out his phone and saw that Tan Bei Bei had called him. He answered the call where she told him to come to the Dragon Defender's base as soon as possible, as there is a task for him there. After a while, Lin Mu was already at the Teng Long Corporation building. Going inside, he saw a large crowd of people in a room similar to a movie theater, but without seats. When he saw Bei Bei, he asked the girl about what happened and why everyone was gathered here. The pink-haired girl turned her gaze to the guy and reported that they had recently caught the leader of a group of mercenaries. His subordinates took 20 people hostage, demanding the release of their leader, but he lost control of the situation. Tang Bei Bei became even more serious. She said that the mercenaries not only took hostages in the number of 20 people, they also wanted to attack the Pearl Tower. Bei Bei said that the dragon protectors should stop them. Lin Mu asked the girl if they had a plan. The headman said that their main task is to rescue hostages, as well as help other units. Lin Mu asked her if they would really go to rescue together. She gave him a strange look and answered in the negative, saying that if they had enough people, they would not have called for recruits. A classmate told the guy that he, as a new recruit, only needed to determine the location of the hostages, and then notify the elders about it. Uncle Yang turned towards the crowd of people and told them that this task was very important. He has already explained the situation, so they shouldn't waste time. He became even more severe. The man looked at the people and ordered the crowd to move out on a mission. 